Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking all about content marketing as a photographer. Now, I'm gonna be honest, the idea for this video came from an Instagram post that I did that I got a little fired up about. If you saw my stories about a week ago, then you probably saw uh, my little mini TED talk about using social media as a photographer to grow your business, to market your business, using it for the free tool that it is, and how if we just can shift our mindset a little bit about this mysterious thing called social media, we can really leverage it to grow our businesses. Anyway, if we haven't met, my name is Kayla and I run an outsourcing agency for photographers called Photog BFF. Our main service is private photo editing. If you've thought at all about outsourcing your editing this year, go ahead and head down to the description box and I have some more information for you. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about why social media really should not be scary to use, how you can shift your mindset to change the way you think about it to really appreciate it for the free marketing tool that it is and how to go about creating a plan, a strategic plan for what you're gonna say, when you're gonna post. Uh, we're gonna cover all of that. And then I'm also gonna take you over the shoulder and show you how I content plan for this business. You can kind of see it behind me, but I have this giant quarterly planning uh, whiteboard that I got from my friend Kat Schmoyer's shop. I will link her down below in case you want to grab one for yourself. But I'm going to show you how I content plan. I use Trello uh, to first map out what I want to post, where I'm posting various things, um, and it all lives inside of a Trello board. But I also then transfer that over to my big giant quarterly planner so that it lives on my wall and I see it all the time. I don't have to open up Trello to be reminded of what our goals are and what we're trying to achieve this quarter. It is literally right in front of me where I can see it all the time. All right, first I wanna talk a little bit about social media. I want you to just, all preconceived notions, all concepts that you have about social media, whether you love it or hate it, just set those aside for a moment and I want you to think about what it would look like to run your business if social media and the internet didn't exist. So let's back up like two decades and pretend that you're running your business before all of this internet, social media, stuff got started. Let's say that you're a branding photographer um, and you need to reach local businesses to communicate to them that you can provide beautiful imagery for their brand to use. Now, how would you go about reaching those business owners without the internet? Well, maybe you would do a direct mail approach. Um, maybe you're going to send brochures. Maybe you're just going to go door to door knocking on businesses doors and saying, hey, I'm a branding photographer and I can help you with your imagery. Um, whatever your method is that you choose, you're going to have to physically do something. Physically go in person, physically deliver a letter or a card. I hit my coffee. <laughs> you're going to have to physically go and do something to reach those business owners to get their attention. All right, now fast forward to the present day. If you think about social media, what it really is, it is basically a, a company, Facebook, Meta, as they're calling themselves now, has gone out and collected your ideal client's attention. And they're offering you that attention, a very small piece of it, for free. Now, can you also pay for some of that attention? Sure. You can run ads on Facebook. Um, you can pay for some of that attention, but you certainly can get some of it for free. So rather than having to physically go to all these people that you might be able to serve, you have their captured attention. We are all addicted to social media. We have it out all the time. Our thumbs go to the apps and they scroll and scroll without us really even thinking about it. And while that's slightly scary for the human race at large, it is a real gift to business owners to be able to have their audience's captured attention even for just a moment to tell them about how they solve the problem that their customer might have. Okay, so now that we've kind of shifted our mindset a little bit, maybe you're starting to see social media a little bit less as this annoying task that you have to do every month and a little more like a gift where you're not having to go out and into the community and find clients. They're on the internet um, and you have this platform where you can then reach them. Let's talk about now that we have their attention, what are we gonna say to them? Well, think back in our earlier example, if you were to send brochures, let's say you got one shot and you're sending a beautifully uh, curated 
postcard to a business that you think, oh, they really need updated imagery. I, I get the look and feel of their brand. I could capture imagery for them. How much care would you take to design and curate this postcard that you're sending to this business owner? Probably a lot. So we want to have that same attention to detail, that same strategy when it comes to our posts on Instagram. Now, a post on Instagram are a dime a dozen, and they're not really costing you anything, and, and it really isn't a one shot. Um, you know, your your followers likely are going to read more than one post, but it could be. It could be that somebody happens across your Instagram, and they're only going to read one post. You want to make each post really jam-packed with value, serve them really well, and help them start to see how you are the answer to a specific problem that they have. So this is something that we do in our business every quarter. We sit down and we think, okay, for the next three months, what are our sales objectives that we're trying to reach? Are we trying to sell digital courses? Are in our business for this upcoming quarter, for example, we're trying to fill editing client seats. So we've got editors on our team that have open seats on their roster and we need to get new photographers in, um, in those seats as editing clients. And so when I'm thinking through what am I going to post to my various content channels, I'm thinking, how can I captivate the attention of a photographer and take those few moments that they're going to spend reading that post to start to work towards helping them see why outsourcing their editing would be a good idea. And there are three things that I think through when I'm mapping out this content. I think of features, benefits, and objections. Okay, so let's start with features and benefits. You hear these terms thrown out a lot when people are talking about sales pages or offers or funnels. You want to think through features, which are the physical attributes of the product or service. So um, and maybe not even physical, but just the descriptive words you would use. So for a mini session, it would be a 30 minute session, 20 delivered images, um, you know, a, an outfit guide that they're going to receive along with their mini session. They're deliverable things, the, the features that come with the product or service. Benefits are why those features matter to your client. So rather than a 30 minute session and 30 images, it's um, beautiful updated images of your children to hang on your wall so that your in-laws ooh and ah uh, over the holiday season when they come to visit or something like that. Um, it's the intangible feeling that having this product or service will well up inside of your client. So we wanna speak to the features Practically, what does our product or service come with? The benefits, why does that matter to our ideal client? And then we want to think through objections. So what are the things, the thoughts that are going through your potential client's mind when they're reading this post, when they're reading about the features and the benefits of what you offer? Um, going back to the mini session example, it could be... Um, I do not want to have to plan outfits for my kids. Like I would love to have updated photos, but oh my gosh, all the work that it's going to take me to have to coordinate those outfits. And I'm just really not good at that. Um, or I know that my husband is not going to go for this. My husband hates having photos taken. Um, I am going to have to convince him it's going to be like pulling teeth, getting him to agree to get photos taken. I apologize if you can hear my dog barking. At least he's really cute. But what are the objections in your case? What are the things that your client is sitting there saying, oh, I mean, yeah, I agree with that, or yeah, I really need that, but X, Y, Z. And then you're going to combat those objections. Um, I love the way Ashlyn Carter puts this. She calls it lawyering up. And if you have not taken her course, Copywriting for Creatives, I highly, highly suggest it. Um, but she talks about this. You want to combat those objections with ways that you either can fix those objections or maybe reasons that those objections just aren't true, like thoughts that your client has that really are myths and are not true. Um, whatever it is, let's go back to our example. Let's say it's, um, I'm going to have to put outfits together. Well, maybe you offer a welcome packet, a welcome guide that includes an outfit selection guide where you show how to put different colors together. You talk about do's and don'ts of different um, colors and patterns of clothing, and you also link to some great inexpensive places to get clothing. You want to combat those objections so that you're getting them closer and closer and closer to them saying, yes, like I want to make this purchase. This is something that I need that would 
fix a problem that I have. Okay, so as I'm thinking through my quarter, I've got my sales goals, my things that I need to sell for this quarter. I've got my features, benefits, and objections that I've listed out. Now it's time to say, okay, what platforms are you going to post to? For us, we have a blog, we have a YouTube channel, and we obviously have Facebook and Instagram. And so I know that every week I've got two pieces of what I would call pillar content, hub content that... That's our blog and our YouTube channel. Those are big pieces of content that take production and time to put together. Um, and then I typically use social media to push to those bigger pieces of content. Now, if you don't have a blog or a YouTube channel um, and you just post to social media right now, that's okay. You can do a long form Instagram post to your grid that's teaching and serving and pointing towards selling. Um, things that you're trying to sell this quarter and you don't have to point to other platforms um, but you want to think through what platforms are you using in your business in this season and then it's really simple you're saying okay I know in three months I'm gonna launch my mini session seats I want to sell out of those the day that I launch and so I am prepping my audience this week I'm gonna talk about this feature. Then next week I'm gonna talk about this benefit. And then I'm gonna talk about this objection. And over and over and over until finally you launch the thing, you open up seats for your mini sessions and hopefully your audience is primed and ready um, to purchase one of those. All right, now that I've kind of laid that out there, I'm gonna show you practically how I do this. I already showed you my calendar, but I'm gonna take you over the shoulder and show you my Trello board that I use. Um, I also have a template for outlining pieces of pillar content, um, and I'll show you that as well, and I'll link down below where I got it from. All right, so here is the Trello board that I mentioned. This is my content calendar board. I use this to plan out a quarter at a time. Um, so we're just now ending March. I'm getting ready to plan out Q2 of our um, year. So you can see I have quarter two here, um, I've begun to fill in April a little bit. Basically what I do is I keep the current quarter up. Um, so in a couple of days I will move March over to the very end. Um, and I keep the completed months over where they're kind of out of sight. But if I need to reference them, I can. And then next to the lists where I keep my content plan, I have ideas. So I have different um, ideas based on different offerings that we have. Uh, we have a Dubsado course. And so in quarters where I'm really pushing that, I have systems content ideas. Um, I have content ideas that push to offers that we've yet to create. But I really just use these lists as kind of a parking lot of places. If I have a thought about a piece of content that I think would be helpful to my audience, I stick it on one of these lists to use in the future. But like I mentioned earlier, the very first step is actually not coming in here and planning your content. It's planning your sales goals. Now I have a separate board where I plan our financial goals and our sales goals for every quarter, the numbers that we're trying to hit. Uh, you could do that in the same board if you wanted to, but I keep mine separate. Once I have all of those things sorted out, then I start to think through, okay, let's say for example, um, let's say for example, our Dubsado course, when I knew that was getting ready to launch, I was coming up with lots of content ideas around the features of Dubsado, the benefits of our course, why a photographer should choose Dubsado over say like HoneyBook and um, maybe some of the objections that photographers tend to have around systems and implementing workflows and that sort of thing. And so my February calendar was full of that sort of stuff, January and February. Our March content was a little lighter because we actually launched the course in March and so that took up a lot of bandwidth. Um, but now we're getting back into every week regularly scheduled. We do a blog post, a YouTube video, and then of course Facebook and Instagram. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build out, you can see I've started to do April, I'm going to drag things over and start to build out my content. Now the way I do ours is we have color labels for our platforms. So this is a YouTube video, I've got a blog post, um, and I'll explain how I build out these cards uh, in just a moment. And then I actually use Planoly. Uh, that's the social media scheduler app that I use and I plan out all of our Instagram and Facebook posts inside of that. So I don't actually add social media posts in here. This is more for our big pillar pieces of content. But you certainly could just have this be Instagram posts and Facebook posts. And you could even 
put the text in here for your Instagram posts and you could add the image that you're wanting to use. And so if you don't wanna pay for a social media scheduling app like Planoly, you could just have it all in here and then manually go and post it or even hire a VA. Or if you already have a VA, you could have them go and post that content for you. Now I mentioned I've got these color labels. This is where I come in and I outline my videos. Um, so this is actually the video that I'm uh, filming right now about how we plan content. So I outline the video. And then like I mentioned, I also have a blog um, card. So the day after this video goes live, we actually will have a blog post go live that will um, have a similar topic and similar content. Um, and I have a copywriter that writes all of my blog posts, but this is a template that I actually purchased from um, Ashlyn Carter from Ashlyn Writes. And the template that she sells is way bigger. Um, I took a lot of it out just because I found that we weren't needing it in working with my copywriter. So this is something that I kind of morphed um, from her template. Um, as I've outsourced the blog writing. So I just fill these things in. I link to the YouTube video and then I have a copywriter, like I said, that writes out my blog posts. Um, but she uses that template to do that. And so I will have in this board these two pieces of content every week. Um, as I'm planning and I'll fill that out for the entire quarter at the beginning of that quarter or at the end of the previous quarter. And so I have it all planned out. I work a week ahead of time. And so I'm filming, editing YouTube videos one week in advance. Um, we've got our blogs being written one week in advance. Um, but really, however you do content in your business, like I said, maybe you don't have big pillar pieces, maybe you just do Instagram and Facebook, that's completely fine. Um, but it's a great idea to come in and have a parking lot of ideas and then kind of pull those in based on what um, offers you're pushing in any given quarter. Once you've kind of figured out content marketing, you've got your content plan down, the next step is to really start to use the audience that you're gaining to grow your email list. While social media is a great tool, we do not own our social media platform. So it's crucial that we're growing an email list, that we're getting the people off of our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube channel, and onto our email list so that we can contact them anytime we want. We don't have to depend on the algorithm uh, to show our content to our audience. So I have a completely free resource for you. If you are brand new to email marketing, maybe you think because you are a photographer but you're not an educator, you don't need an email list. I will tell you, friend, that that is just not true. You really, really need an email list. And so I wanna help you get started with one. This guide will teach you how to create an opt-in, how to embed it on your website so that you can start collecting email addresses. Um, I talk about how to create a lead magnet that people actually want to download because just having a box that asks people to join your newsletter is not enough to get them to convert and actually join your email list. So I invite you to go down to the description box, download this completely free guide. We just revamped it. So even if you've already downloaded this one from us, definitely download the new version uh, because it is jam-packed and will really help you get started with email marketing. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will catch you in the next video.